Good afternoon. Uh, welcome, my, welcome to my daily chat. This is episode 899. One more to go. Tomorrow's going to be 900. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Celebrate, but that's, that's tomorrow's broadcast. Um, today's topic, though, is a little bit more um, serious. And actually, it is pretty serious. Talking about harassment, sexual harassment. And so the, the topic today, or the question today is, if and when it happens to you, what do you do? And I was in conversation with a friend this morning. Anyway, I'll talk about that in a moment. I'm really jumping ahead already because I want to dive in and talk about it. But first, let me choose myself, which might explain why I'm going to talk about this. And also, um, some more framing information before I jump in. So first of all, hi, my name is Barry Selby. This is a Sunday broadcast, hence the casual attire. Um, I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. That's a best-selling book, by the way very biased about the book because I wrote it at the first I wasn't but now I am so I do recommend the book highly um, I help women create balance in love life and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine that's also what caused cause what inspired these talks in the first place um, and also what informs my work and almost three years ago now it's very close to three years where I started doing these talks called messages for the masculine inspiring your feminine heart so today we're episode number 899, and this one is a topic that's been sitting on the back burner for a while, because I've done some Me Too conversations before, but today I want to speak more bluntly to the issue at hand, and offer some suggestions and guidance from my perspective. I'm not saying I'm the expert to go to person on this, but I'm speaking to what you might want to consider when this happens. So, and I'm going to be very blunt about it, because as I was talking to my friend this morning, which is what started this conversation, um, a new friend, it was bringing up a lot of stuff for me like a lot of upset frustration the fact that this still happens so I want to hopefully speak to solutions that's what my plan is and I don't have an idea really what I'm going to say but I've got some sen- I've got some ideas I want to drop on you so you're in a situation where if if <laughs> so I said if and when if when you're in the situation what do you do about it if you're in sexual harassment now predominantly I'm going to talk about this being happening to women by men but frankly <clears throat> I know this goes the other both both directions, women to women, men to men, women to men, the whole paradigm. But I'm speaking primarily men to women because as I said at the beginning, I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine and I do serve women in my work. So they're the ones I'm going to speak to in this perspective. But if you're someone who's been a victim of this, whatever your gender, sexual preference, etc., I'm hoping these tips will help you as well. So the first thing right at the top I want to speak about is self-doubt. In scenarios like this where sexual harassment happens, in particular in the workplace, let's put it in that context, that's where the whole Me Too thing really starts from. It's in the work environment where somebody, let's just say a man, believes they have a position of power over a woman, and then we use that to create sexual provocation in that context. That's what happened with Matt Lauer, that's what happened with a bunch with, with um, um, <laughs> Interesting how names blank when I don't want to talk about them. Where these different pe- people did it because they had their own companies, their own companies, they were in high positions, and so they didn't think that they'd be in trouble for doing it. So the first thing is, as the victim of something like that, you might be doubting yourself, thinking, like, what happened? Like, what did I do? So it's okay to be present to what happened in the sense of self um, inventory and self re- self reflection, but to start doubting your own sanity because it happens to you is not what I recommend. In fact, I would recommend having a tighter grasp of your sanity right at the front, right up front. That's one of the pieces that I'm going to speak to. And, I'm, I'm, and just to be clear, I don't have a, a script of order of these things. I'm just talking about what's on my mind about this. And, and they may go in sequence. I doubt it. They usually go wherever they go. And I may come back to a couple of them as well. So first of all is self-doubt. Because there's the tendency to think that it didn't happen or to think the other person may be right when they convince you that it wasn't anything bad. Don't doubt yourself. Hold to your truth of what you experienced. Because even if it didn't happen physically, if you felt it emotionally, it still happened. So it's having the presence and wherewithal to stand up for yourself and to state what's true for you. So own that space. Second one is if when this happens to you, get support. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about finding the HR department of the company, but find some people you know, people you trust, whether it's a therapist, counselor, friend, sibling, whatever it is, reach out to them for moral support in that moment. Not to have them go to fight for you, because that's another story that might come up later on, 
but to simply have a place to ground because the challenge with sexual harassment and being on the receiving end in some ways is a lot like bullying and I'm speaking of my own experience of bullying so that's why it resonates for me in this sense it feels like somehow I have no control and if you've been sexually harassed you might feel that way too so having someone who is, who's got your back basically emotionally or energetically gives you the sense where you can feel okay because a lot of what happens when the sexual harassment goes on is the victims of that are feeling a place where either they don't have a voice, they don't have no control, they don't have any power, and they don't believe that what they what happens to them has validity. And I, and I say all of it does have validity. So first of all, get support from somebody you trust. That may not be in the company you work for, by the way, because the thing is in the company, there's a whole other thing going on, which I hopefully can download for you. This stuff is coming through as it comes through. So that's secondly. Third one, um, it's going to sound silly, but the third one is write it down. Document what happens, because if this happened once or it happens again, and you're talking about you have it, think about it in yourself, if you document the times, dates, and that sort of stuff, it gives you evidence. And in this situation, it may require that approach to deal with what happened. Because oftentimes, as I said, sexual harassment comes from somebody who thinks they're in power over somebody who, thinks that, who they think doesn't have the power. As has been shown in the Me Too movement the last couple of years, that doesn't hold weight anymore. When, again, people like Matt Lauer or other people who have been accused of this, even if they haven't necessarily been in jail, they've been put out of the way. So basically that power position doesn't play at all. You know, um, his other name will come back to me at some point. So be very clear that what happened, if it happens, needs to be tracked for your own sanity and for your own, pe own not the peace of mind but your own known feeling of like okay now I've got something proving what happened because the thing is we as I said at the beginning self-doubt does creep in it does tend to start thinking like maybe I over blew it maybe I didn't see it right by writing it down after it happens as close as you can to when it happens as factual as you can and yes if you have emotional upset write down how you feel it gives you a place to come back to we can remember what happened clearly because we have a tendency to paint over the his paint over the past with a sort of forgetful brush, and in this situation, if it happens repeatedly, that's not a thing that not a thing you want to do. So that's third. Write it down. Um, let's see what f what fourth is. Well, there's two okay, two things at play here. One of which, so number four, maybe number five. I'm not sure I'm going to play this, but number four is. Um, Figure out your response, meaning that check into the path you have to get, um, I don't want to say revenge, it's not the right word, but but to be heard, whether it's through the HR department, through through the person who, who confronted you, through one of their managers, through some other level, consider what options you have so you know what is available to you. Now, in some scenarios, and this is why it's number five or the PS number four, some scenarios you're in situations where maybe it's an all-male team and they have each other's backs and they don't feel you've got support anywhere. You need to be willing, and this is the worst case scenario, you need to be willing to walk away. And that's the biggest challenge. And I don't mean walk away from the scenario, I mean walk away from the company. If that company does not provide an environment of understanding, of un acceptance, of equality, of um, supporting everybody in the company, everybody not just the people in charge it may not be somewhere you it may not be somewhere you want to work and you gotta be willing to look at that as an option I'm not saying you have to do it but you gotta be willing to have that as an option because frankly if you don't see that clearly then you'd be in a place probably a feeling like you go back against the wall but having that freedom to know that if it comes to it you're willing to leave then you'll be willing to take care of the response with less attachment with more clarity and perhaps with more um, presence to what's going on so having that space and understanding is a key part of this. That's five. Let's see if there's anything else. Because again, this is stuff that was right up in front when it came up this afternoon as I was sitting in, well, I was basically meditating, dozing off. <laughs> but I had this thing just dropping in, so I wanted to talk about it right now. So another part, another piece of puzzle. This is number six. Number six. Um, I also recommend, because there are enough of this Me Too conversation out there, to reach out to various groups, speakers, individuals, organizations that have got investment in this Me Too conversation. 
And again, do you do, do your due diligence to reach out and find people you know who are honest about it, not people who are just looking to um, storm the barricades and, 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 and want to revenge against anybody who's done it, because that's not necessarily the cleanest way to go. But finding resources, support for yourself, where people are um, available you can consult with. Again, like I said, number two about finding support out there is worthwhile doing that too. So that's six right there. I'm just seeing if there's anything else. I'm not sure actually. Think that was the ones I wanted to get out. Let's, okay, so now I've cleared the decks in my head. Let me see if anything else comes through after that space. The biggest thing I want to speak to just as, a, as a, an overarching piece is if it happened to you, please don't doubt yourself. The challenge that I know happens is sometimes it feels like you get convinced by those that did it that you provoked it or you were in the wrong place at the wrong time or you invited it or you, con you consented somehow. And if you didn't, don't doubt that you didn't. You own your own space. This is kind of back to number one, which is, which is uh, doubting yourself. And frankly, I'm saying this clearly, is the more that you can come back into loving yourself as a, as a reminder to that your value, your caring, your support is strong, then the more you'll be unswayed by other people's opinions. And in this scenario, if this is going on for you, it's important you do that. So that's number seven, I guess. Well, number one, A, or seven, whatever. So there's a few things to give you some food for thought. This is a topic that I didn't talk about that much this way because I've just talked about it as a Me Too statement declaration in talks like a year ago. Um, but I wanted to speak about it now because of the conversation this morning from a friend. So I know it's, still it's definitely still happening. I mean, no argument. But it's something that I believe needs to shift. And hopefully these ideas, these points, and I may have to do more of these, but these seven, six, seven ideas will hopefully give you some direction, some clarity, and some support. Um, this is not my expertise to say that I'm an expert in the whole Me Too conversation. I'm a guy for a start. Although, again, having been through bullying, there's a certain parallel energetically of that with Me Too because it is about power, power, control, energy going on. Um, See, I'm already starting to go down the revenge path, so I'm going to watch what I say because I don't want to start saying things you should do this and this to get, their, get your own back on these people. Um, but if you have, le okay, well, I'm going to throw this out as a possibility. If you do have leverage over this person who did it to you or you know, who, who harassed you, you may want to let them know you have the leverage. Not necessarily do anything about it, but to let them know that... Um, there's consequences to what they did. Because the biggest problem about this whole Me Too stuff and the sexual harassment piece is the people who do it, who inflict it, who are the, the protagonists, don't believe there's any consequences. And to educate them on the consequences, not necessarily to have them pay consequences, this is a whole other level to play at. And it takes a deeper, it takes a, um, it takes a certain mindset to do this. But to make them aware of the consequences that they may, the, of the price they may pay or will pay if they either one, progress, or two, don't renege or own up to it, can give them pause and may make them change path. This is a shit. I'm not giving you, I'm saying you should do this because it might, depending on the environment, it might be dangerous to your own health. So I'm just saying this is an, op is an option too. The challenge with that is you can put yourself in a place where you look at being, um, not it's not martyrdom, I'm thinking of, there's another word. But you may be, if, again, check your environment. Be present to your environment. As I mentioned earlier, if you've been around, if you're in a company of all men and you say this and you, and you show this other guy the position, he might cry to the other guys and say, like, look what she's doing to me and blame you, make him the victim, make himself the victim. As I'm saying, you can be careful with this one. So just be aware of your environment. And again, having the understanding that you may be, may have to, may choose to, may need to leave is one of the things you must incorporate into that if you really are being clear with yourself. Otherwise, you end up, because what, because the thing is, if you don't do these things, what you end up doing is destroying your inner peace. And secondarily, secondarily, you start to have real challenge with owning up to your integrity. Because this is something when you know it happens to you, not responding can be really stifling. And not owning it for yourself can be extremely stifling, meaning that you're stuffing down your feelings and you're actually feeling that you don't trust yourself. And in my coaching, I've said this many times before, and I talk about my self-love practice as a reminder for that that self-love is a fundamental piece of self-trust. Because there's some part of you that has an agreement inside about taking care of yourself. That's almost an automatic we carry. When something happens to you like this, it's violating that agreement so you feel like you've broken your own trust with yourself. That's why these P's are important to you. So take, this, take these two heart, write them down, use them in your own life. They may just make your journey cleaner and clearer for yourself. Um, 
I'm going to put some links in the comments because I do that every day and I do want to, I've been told I must put a call to action every mind at one of the talks. That's why I do those links in there. But I will put the link there for my self-love practice as a reminder. And secondly, because I, I am launching this for, this coming Friday, I moved it back a week because the date was better. Um, my, my Thriving Through the Holidays group support program might be applicable in this scenario too. Maybe. Not promising, but maybe. But I'm putting it out there because frankly, with the holidays coming up very shortly and travel plans getting, cra getting crazy and the stress that's building up from that, this could also affect your work as well as your personal life. So my Thriving Through the Holidays group program runs through, it starts January 20, uh, sorry, starts November 22nd, this Friday, goes to January 25th, which is a Friday, I believe. So it's just over three months, over two months. So check it out, have a look at it. If you do sign up, the, the self-love meditation is given as a gift inside of it, so you can save 100 bucks right there. Um, and check it out. So those two links will be in the comments, and I'll put a link in the comments so you reach out and chat to me. Um, it's an opportunity to have a conversation if it's about relationship-centric or about this sort of topic. You can sign up for a complimentary chat with me as a gift. That'll be in the comments too. So those three links will be in the comments. Um, and if you've got any input, ideas, thoughts about this topic, please put them below. Let me know. And if you don't want to do it publicly, send me a message over social media. This is a this is a bigger topic than just one little talk can provide. But hopefully these six, seven, eight things I provided might give you some additional insight, support, and guidance. If you haven't seen my talks before, by the way, normally they're not this topic. <laughs> it's about love and relationships usually, but this is on the theme of that. Um, I do talk about a lot about polarity and masculine and feminine, um, the dance. That's actually things I'm working on more and more now. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live that I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook. You can join me live every day, seven days a week. Well, yesterday was late because I was at an event, but normally it's 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. Um, I also do these, I also have them, excuse me, the replays stored on my bit my business page on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, my business page on Facebook is barryselby.author, which is my um, it's my business page. You can like that page and you'll find most of the broadcasts there, but Facebook doesn't save all of them because there's way more than apparently Facebook can handle. <laughs> but they do show up in the replays every year, every, um, in my history every day. But you, better yet though, you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash barryselby. You can find my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to that. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where all of them list from newest to oldest. You can scan through, search through. You can search for keywords, check out the titles, find ones that speak to you, and watch any one you want. Um, as I said, the links will be in the comments for you to check out and sign up for things, check out things if you want. I invite you to take a look. I'd love to hear from you how this speaks to you, how this lands for you, if you've got any ideas, if you've got additional points. If you've got point numbers 8, 9, 10, 11, please put them in the list as well or message me them and I'll put them into another talk. Sexual, harass sexual harassment the weather came out was deplorable is something I'm really it really pisses me it, it, it ticks me off I was going to say something else and I decided to reframe it um, and it frustrates me to see people putting up with it so this is hopefully contributing to letting people know they don't have to put up with it anymore so I hope this has been of help to you and again any ideas thoughts if this, if this challenges you if, you if something I said doesn't fit let me know that too this is a t talk that's a bit challenging I know but I need to talk about it today so it's out there so I thank you for watching. I appreciate being with me as always. Um, tomorrow's, topic, tomorrow's topic will be, nine, it'll be nine by 900 tomorrow. Hold up in topic. Probably something lighter. But I appreciate you watching this one and thank you for being with me as always. And I'll see you again tomorrow. So please take care of yourself and I'll see you again soon. Hi Tony, I'm just wrapping up. Please watch from the beginning. I would invite your feedback. Definitely invite your feedback. Um, so thanks for being with me and I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same channel. And as always, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.